Good morning, Rocksnuds. I'm pretty sure most of you are aware that Axios is a sister brand to Zelos, which indicates the overall quality of this watch will be very good, and it is. The company is based in Singapore, but like the majority of micro brands, the watch is almost certainly made in China, as are most things these days. I've previously owned an Axios Ironclad dive watch, as well as a Pathfinder field watch. For various reasons, I sold both, but like many of my watches I've sold, I wondered why we parted ways afterwards. I'm not quite certain how to describe this. You see, there are dressy sports watches and sporty dress watches, but I don't feel this is either. The dial more resembles a sports watch, as does the chunky bezel and size. However, there are specifications that indicate this is more of a dress watch. For argument's sake though, I'm gonna sit on the fence and describe this as a hybrid. I kind of think this is a Marmite watch, and there will be some people who absolutely love it because of the originality, and others who won't like it because they can't fit it into any sort of category. And welcome to our unpaid and unsponsored review of the Axios Tribune. At this point, I think it's good to get the money side of things out of the way. Well, if you've committed to the Kickstarter campaign, you may have got one of these for $325, but that was a while back. At present, the full price is $499, but it's presently on offer on the Axios site for $399. I very much suspect Nobody actually paid more than $399 though, but I may be wrong. Now if you live in the UK, like I do, you'll have to factor in a 20% duty charge, which will make the watch about $500 or £400. Whether or not you find this good value for money, well, you're going to have to sit through this rather unprofessional and poor video to decide. Now for what it's worth, I bought a used but virtually mint one for about half price. Buyers beware, microband watches rarely make good investments, even if their original price represents better value than normal high street brands. It came in this rather nice pouch, but I believe Axios don't supply a box as well for this particular model. Inside is a year's warranty card, and like Jody, I believe a year is a little bit stingy. And this is my watch of the day. It's the Ball Fireman Nightbreaker. What a lovely watch it is too. And of course, that's Amy. I have to tell you here and now, I love the dimensions of this watch. The case is 38 millimeters. The depth is about 10.2 millimeters. The lug width 20 millimeters. And the lug to lug is a little under 46 millimeters. On a leather strap, it weighs around 70 grams. Now I don't consider 38 millimeters to be small for a watch. In actual fact, a true dress watch should be about 36mm or even smaller. But if you like something a bit more chunky, this may be a good time for you to stop this video and have a look to see what's on Netflix. So what makes this watch tick? Not figuratively, but literally. I'm a little confused, because other watch reviewers have quoted this movement as being a Myo to 9015, as they do on the Axios website. However, this watch has no ghost position which leads me to believe it's actually a 9039. Either way, I'm not particularly bothered, but some people may be. Now you're presently looking at the back of my Relio Solstice, which has got the 9015 inside it, but aesthetically from the back, they look identical. It's got a beat rate of 28,800 beats per hour. It acts, it hand winds, and it's got a power reserve of about 42 hours. It's a great workhorse, and if regulated correctly, can be very accurate. That said, its positional variants fall short of an ETA 2824 or any of its clones. The stack is very shallow, so this makes it an ideal calibre for this type of watch. Now some people moan about a noisy unidirectional rotor, but from experience, it's something that's never bothered me. In reality, over a 24 hour period, this is only running at plus one second a day. But let's see what the time grapher thinks of it. And there we are. A good beta, an excellent amplitude, running at plus three seconds a day. Absolutely fantastic. The six millimeter crown is signed with the Axios logo, although the dial just has Axios printed on it, something I think they may have got wrong. It's a push-pull crown that is beautifully milled, and as you would expect, operates the movement perfectly. It may have been nice if they made it a screw-down crown, but with its 50 meters of water resistance and a leather strap, who really needs one? At present, there are four colour variants, 
albeit I think there were previously more. A teal, a blue, a salmon and a champagne. Personal taste tells me this is the best option, but of course that's your choice. It's a sector style dial, and if you want to know exactly what that means, Google it, I had to. There is an outer second hand track, then moving inwards there is a textured ring. Up next there is a minute and hour track, sitting on a sunburst section of the dial. In the centre there is another textured section with the Axios name under the 12, although I would have just preferred the logo. And above the 6 o'clock it simply reads Tribune. Now it's time to have a look at the loom. Yep, like the Steinheit I recently reviewed, it doesn't have one. As Axios class this as a dress watch, this is understandable though. But because of the sporty vibes, I may have preferred they made some sort of attempt. It won't surprise you that this has got a sapphire crystal. And despite the fact the watch only has a depth of 10.2mm, it's a box sapphire. It's certainly got some AR coating as well. I don't know how many layers, but it appears to be a clear coating and applied to the underside. Now I own a Rolex, a Tudor, a Ball, a Glycine Airman and no less than four Christopher Wall watches and in my opinion the case finishing on this relatively inexpensive watch matches up to those ones. I know that's controversial but that's how I feel. If you don't believe me, spend a few seconds looking over this. Now other than the polished twisted lugs and fine line of transitioning, this case is solely satin brush. This is unusual for a watch that is meant to be a dress watch, so again, I'm a little bit confused. It's very well shaped, very comfortable, and it fits beautifully to the back of the wrist. At least one other reviewer moaned about the case back. Oh, I love it. I'm no great lover of exhibition backs, so when I saw this had a nicely engraved case back with something quite pretty, I was delighted. Now the name Tribune has something to do with Roman Tribuners, hence the engraving. Anyway, it screws down and helps the previously mentioned water resistance. The watch came with this very nice vintage style Halloween leather strap with quick release spring bars. Whether or not it's the right strap for the watch, I haven't quite made up my mind, but it really is very good, as is the sign buckle. Now I think Axios did the right thing by not putting it on a bracelet as I don't think it would have been a match made in heaven. In actual fact, I don't think this is much of a strap monster, and the correct choice of strap may require a degree of taste and time. Fortunately, I've got both, and I've ordered the dark brown Harris Tweed strap. I would love to know your suggestions, so please leave them in the comments below. In conclusion, what do I think? As much as I love the overall quality and quirky vibes, the fact this is neither a dress watch or a sports watch is still confusing me a bit. That said, I suspect this may be a keeper, simply because it's so different and it looks quite stunning. Ok, I would have liked some loom, a screw down crown and a logo instead of the text on the dial, but the overall aesthetics and the feel of the watch makes up for its shortfalls. Of course, only time will tell to see if we truly bond, but I suspect we may. Now that brings me to the end of this review, so if you've enjoyed it please click on the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, leave your comments below and enjoy the rest of your day.